All right. Today we're going to talk about acids. Primarily the two main ones that you're going to use in GT6. That being sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid uses primarily for tungsten processing. Has some other uses. And sulfuric acid. These are the two first acids you're going to need to set up to make. And are kind of the easiest ones to make or the um, basis of making others. Um, sulfuric acid is used in many different things. One of the main things it's used for is a secondary way of processing ores. Um, you will by this point probably know that you can use a magnetic separator to process your purified ores into refined purified ores to get a little bit more out of them. So in this case of bauxite, you will get a 6% chance at 18 ilmenite ore and 6% chance at 18 hematite. Or you can also centrifuge that bauxite for a guaranteed kaolite, ilmenite, and hematite. Now these are tiny refines. As you can see from the tool tip there, they are only 0.152 of that set of material. But you can also, with some sulfuric acid, run them through a bath, which will give you, in the case of bauxite, a 50% chance each of 2 times 5 tiny refined bauxite ore along with vitriol of clay and hydrogen gas. Now vitriol of clay you'll notice there is 8.5 units of it here. That can be put in an electrolyzer at one point or one yeah one point seven units instead of eight point five units with water and get two small piles of alumina dust and sulfuric acid back. So then your sulfuric acid can be put right back in to continue washing. Um, I do believe for most of these uh, vitrols it is a uh, lossless because you're putting in the water to fill it back in there's many many ores that can be done that way uh, if we look up vitrol you have um, red vitrol clay martian blue black cyan gray white pink green now some of these don't actually have uh, material that can be used with them but like red let's use the actual greg tech thing here red comes from mainly cobalt cobalite we have green which is mainly iron type things so andradite uh, chromite, which has iron in it, chromium, uh, dark iron, ilmenite. You can also use it to process ilmenite into rutile and give you some green vitriol out. Another thing you can use it for. Um, clay is for. Uh, Alumnia's type stuff. Martian is one of them that I don't believe exists. Yeah, Martian doesn't have a uh, way of making it. Uh, gray is for uh, manganese. White is zinc. 
Diane is also is nickel, pink, manganese, green was iron. So this is a great way of getting a bit more um, of the base material that you're trying to get or more of a byproduct depending on how the case may go there but you'll see six units of green vitriol turn into seven units of sulfuric acid and then if we look at here 3.5 that would be half of the seven gives you three of the green so that's completely lossless on the sulfuric acid. But that is a nice change that Greg had made because originally you would get sulfur out of it. And you'd have to make your sulfuric acid again. This way you don't have a bunch of sulfur sitting around and you don't have to continuously make sulfuric acid. So also you'll see here in a second that sulfuric acid is a building block to getting to a lot of your other um, acids. So we're going to use sulfuric acid with fluorite to make hydrogen fluoride eventually. And we're going to use sulfuric acid with potassium nitrate to make nitric acid. Nitric acid being something you're going to need down the road for making uh, aqua regia. Aqua regia being something that is used to help process down uh, platinum group materials. So um, also cassiterite and I think gold might be in there. Um, but like sheldonite, iridium osmium you can do copper in it to get more gold um gold to get more gold iridium again and this is a whole different process we can talk about down the line um but then you will also use sulfuric acid with salt to make hydrochloric acid so let's back up here to the beginning of the process. First thing you're going to need is a roasting oven. So in a roaster, you can put just about any um, sulfide or um, sulfur-based ores. Like you can put arsenopyrite, chocopyrite, Cobalite, Sheldonite, Galena, Kesterite, uh, Molybdenite. It goes on and on and on. Anything that when you look at the um, scientific notation there, it says S. That means it is, has sulfur as one of its units. You can throw it into the roaster. And then that will give you sulfur dioxide from the air or the oxygen. Because you can also use oxygen in here. Um, sorry, that's CO2. That's a whole different story. Uh, where is the... There we go. Oxygen. So you can also use oxygen in it. Now, the big difference here, if we look at tetrahydride itself if you do it in air you will get an 80% chance of the copper the antimony the iron and then the 1.125 units of sulfur dioxide where if you use end air same thing nether air same thing but if you use oxygen, you have a guaranteed chance, guarantee of 27, 70 seconds of copper, 970 seconds of antimony, and 970 seconds of iron dust, and the 1.125 units of 
sulfur dioxide. So the way we have it set up here for our original is just using sulfur. Now by putting sulfur in here, we will have no solid output. So there will be no 80 per 20 percent loss going on. There's no 80 percent for that because the chance is only for the solid output, never for the liquid or gas in this point. So we're using sulfur with air. We're going to have another roaster set up that will use oxygen. We're going to be setting that up in the next stream. And then that is what we will use for our pyrite, chocopyrite, tetrahydrite, so on and so forth to get sulfur dioxide out of those and not lose any of our iron and copper and all that good stuff so once you get the roasting oven you will need an air vent which is what we have here on the back of this pipe and that will supply the air to your machine now we have it set up so it will also put said air into our first mixer here that's what this black pipe is it's running through here because when you get your sulfur dioxide, you will also need air or again oxygen to make sulfur trioxide. So if we look here at the for sulfur dioxide, mix air and sulfur dioxide together. One unit of air, 0.75 units of sulfur dioxide turn into one unit of sulfur trioxide. Don't mind that, we'll get to it in a second. Oxygen, 0.25 units of oxygen, 0.75 units of sulfur dioxide become one unit of sulfur trioxide. So you're going to use more air, but that's because air is mostly made up of nitrogen, not oxygen. Um, so the, now we'll get to this up here. This is a catalyst. It is not consumed, as you can see by the tag. It's just something that is needed to promote the chemical process. And in this recipe, it is showing platinum, but you can also use vanadium pentoxide, which is easily obtained from centrifuging Oosh. black sand. So you get a 90% chance at magnetite and a 10% chance at vanadium dioxide. Your main way of getting vanadium is through this process, so you wouldn't have the vanadium to mix in the roaster to make vanadium pentoxide. So that's how you're going to be getting it. And then, like I said, you only need one of them in here and it'll work forever. It never gets consumed. So then the next step is going to be water in your mixer with sulfur trioxide that we made over here. So I'll show it here, sulfur trioxide and water make sulfuric acid. So that is what we're doing in the second mixer here. Is here on the back that the sulfuric dioxide is coming out here, is up and over and into this mixer. And then this is our water pipe leading into the side there because the centrifuge is auto output as the top but it can also be output in through the or auto input is from the top it can also be input through the side but it has to be piped or pumped in now you can once you get the filters mix these two pipes together with a quadruple or nanuple pipe but we'll get to that later 
this is a perfect way to set it up early game just pipe it in into different places so then we have our sulfuric acid which at that point we need to change over to stainless steel pipes as stainless steel is your early game material that can handle acids different pipes have different quality different things that it can handle some can handle gases some cannot some can handle acids and some cannot so we pick we switch to stainless steel here you'll notice we've got a pipe that's running down there are two stainless steel tanks down underneath there you can just barely see um, because we're going to have a lot of sulfuric acid needed so we have that running down to one tank and then also over to this one which again we are using here to make the hydrochloric acid so rock salt or regular salt can be put in sulfuric acid to make sulfur or hydrochloric acid and you also get potassium bisulfite with it also bisulfate with it and then like i said sulfuric acid is going to be your main way of processing down um tungsten ores so ferberite you'll see you get Hydrochloric acid with ferberite will give you ferric chloride and tungstic acid. We'll talk about all that stuff in a later video. But that is how you make your first two main acids. Again, we'll be making nitric acid and ferric. Um, I actually forgot the name of it for a second. Hydrogen fluoride. We'll be making those very soon. Um, but we had to get this out of the way first. So I figured this is the best thing to talk about for now. Those when we get to that specific process. Now, the way to do this early game. We just have a solid burning box to power our roaster and then this is where you get into differences uh, we are using gt6u so we have small gas turbines so we are using natural gas that we've gotten from a um, infinite vein of it we found down out there and that is what we're going to be using uh, we will be wasting a lot of it for that purpose, but if we come down here, don't mind our mess here. There's the tanks I was talking about for storing our sulfuric acid and our hydrochloric acid. We had originally set it up the GT6 way, which is a burning box, a boiler, both of bronze, and then piping that up to steam turbines that would have taken the place of both of them. So depending on if you're using GT6 or GT6U, and if you've actually found natural gas, depends on which way you're going to want to set yours up. And so that is how we did it here. Hopefully that helps you guys out with making sulfuric and hydrochloric acid. So if you have any questions, comments, or issues in the comments below or in our Discord, have a good day.